Hello, welcome back. This is just a continuation from the previous video. As you can see, this time we have infinitely many x's. <laughs> and then this is still equal to 2 and this is equal to 3. And do you think that we can use the same method to solve both of these equations? Hmm, I don't know. But anyway though, this is rather famous. Let me demonstrate what's the famous way to do this. When we have infinitely many x's like this, let me just put this down in red for you guys. So we have xx all the way, right? And this right here is of course equal to 2, because I just changed the color. Well, have a look right here. If I color this x to be red, and then the rest as well, isn't this just the same as 2? Because this part is still has infinitely many x's. Yes, right? So, we can rewrite this as x to the second power, and that's equal to 2. Excellent. Well, you might be wondering, could I have done this? Because we have infinitely many x's like this, could I look at this x right here first, and then I will just go infinitely many times? This right here seems like we have to solve x to the x to the second power that's equal to 2. Well, if you want to do this this way, yes, it's the same. And in fact, this is why I did the previous video first, because again, if you have this right here, you can just solve x to the second power is equal to 2, which is exactly what we are encountering right now as well. Okay, here's the deal. To solve this, we take the square root on both sides by just the positive version, all right? The x is just equal to positive square root of 2. And you might be wondering, why not negative? Well, Technically, when you are looking at this right here, you should do this in terms of a sequence. Namely, you start with x, and then you look at x to the x power. But if you have x to the x power, so that's the reason why you do not use negative numbers for that. Right? And especially when we have limits, you seriously have to do this in order. Anyway though, let's see if we can do the same thing for the second one. Here we have all this is equal to 3, I will just put this down for you guys, equal to 3. Alright, same thing. I will pick this to be the x in red, and then so on. And this right here becomes x to the third power, that's equal to 3. Wonderful! And then, this right here is less debatable, because we can just take the cube root on both sides, and we don't even have to worry about the plus or minus. We will just end up x equals the cube root of 3. And it seems like we are all done. But unfortunately, this right here is not the case. The deal is that if you do it like this, this is actually not the answer for that. And in fact, we have a lot of things to say about this equation. Right? So you might be wondering, how come when we have 2 right here, we actually have the answer square root of 2? But when we have a 3 right here, we do the same procedure, this is actually not the answer. First of all, let me convince you guys by looking at the screen right here. If you just start with square root of 2, and you build out the powers, you will see what? The result is approaching 2, right? So that's of course the answer. Perfect. However though, if you start with cube root of 3, and you build out the power, the result, unfortunately, does not approach 3. But it does approach to a certain number. It does converge to about 2.4 something, right? Well, what's not a number? I will do that in the next video, not now. Let's talk about why this has a solution and this right here does not have the solution. Here's the deal. This right here, it's called the infinite because we have infinitely many x. Infinite. And we are talking about power. And then we have a tower. So, this is really famous, the infinite power tower. Let me show you guys this right here first. Suppose you want to solve equation x to the x to the x dot 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 forever. This equation equals y, let me just put this down right here. I will tell you, you can only solve this, this right here has a solution, only if why it's in between of two numbers. Well, what are the numbers? I will tell you why has to be less than or equal to the famous number e. And on the other hand, it has to be greater than or equal to e to the negative 1, 
where you can also write yes, 1 over e. Well, let's see. This right here is approximately 2.718, yeah? And then e to the negative 1, let me see, it's approximately 0 0.368, all right? Well, have a look right here. Earlier, this equation was equal to 2, and 2 is indeed in between of this and that. So we know it does have a solution, and the best part is that this procedure will help you to find the solution. However, when we have 3 right here, unfortunately, 3 is outside of this interval because 3 is bigger than e, technically speaking. <laughs> so this right here actually does not have an answer at all, unfortunately. All right? So now, have a look. I will also like to tell you, earlier we see something kind of weird. Because when we plug in the cube root of 3 into the infinite power tower, the result actually converge. So I would like to tell you, if you have x to the x to the x da 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 forever, I would just say, right, let's just look at, in terms of a computation um, perspective, this right here converges if, right, again, x is in between of two numbers, I will tell you, x is in between of, well, the biggest number is the e's root of e, I will write yes, e to the 1 over e's power, like this. And in the meantime, x has to be bigger than e to the negative e. All right, and now I will tell you guys some approximations. This right here is approximately 1.445. And e to the negative e is approximately 0 0.066. All right? And now I will also like to tell you, when we look at the cube root of 3, this right here is approximately 1.442. So as you can see, this right here, it is in between of this and that. So if you plug in the cube root of 3 inside of the power tower right here, you actually get a convergence value. That limit actually does exist. However, the limit is not equal to 3. Unfortunately, again, this right here does not have an answer. Okay, if you're surprised with the result that we just got and you want to see more similar things just like this, then check out Brilliant. It is an interactive website and focus on problem solving and they have over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. I like Brilliant because their content surprises you, puzzles you, and they make you understand the modern world better. All of their courses have storytelling, co-writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. Brilliant stop provoking math courses will guide you to mastery by taking complex topics and breaking down into small pieces so that you can understand them better. You can start by having fun with the interactive explorations, and over time you will be amazed at what you can actually accomplish. So if you are excited to learn more, you can use the link brilliant.org slash blackpinkrepan and you can also find the link in the description. This way you can get a 20% off discount to their subscription. And now, if you are wondering how can we come up with these numbers, I will have to tell you, that will be in the next video, alright? And thank you guys so much for watching the video, and also want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.